Hey everybody, welcome back to Reach and Reverie today. I am so excited because I have an amazing video planned for us today. I am inviting y'all along to join me as I show you exactly where I plan on planting everything and what I plan on planting in our spring 2021 garden. It is pretty cold today. The high is 32 degrees. And on days like this, I really enjoy spending a lot of it inside. I'm the type of person who I enjoy being outside. I love working with my hands. I love um, building things, growing things, spending time with the animals out here. So when I feel cooped up inside, I tend to be thinking about what I could be doing out here, which includes going over all my seed packets, really looking at everything that those seeds like and enjoy to grow and thrive and be happy plants. And I find myself researching and thinking a lot about the future and what I want to do the next growing season. So I have been thinking a lot about the spring 2021 garden lately. This is only going to be my second full year gardening, which means that I know that I have a lot of things to learn and I know that a lot of you on here watching this are very experienced and have a lot more experience than I do. Some of these things might be shifted around a little bit. I know everything I want to plant this year and I have an idea of where everything I want to be planted has room in the garden. However, I am still working on spacing. I'm still working on what soil preferences each plant have, which is going to go into which plants complement each other well and can grow well with each other and things like that. So if you see anything in this walkthrough that brings up a huge red flag of that is not going to work, leave it in the comments below and I'll take a look at it. Now yesterday I actually built a new addition to this homestead that I think is going to really benefit us in the 2021 growing season. Can you see it? <laughs> we have an arched cattle panel trellis. This was a really easy build. It can be done even by one person probably. I did have Luis help me build it and it just took um, only part of a day. So you could build a bunch of these I betcha and anybody can do it. It was really cheap. Total cost of materials. Let's see. The panel itself was about $23. T posts were about $4.50 a piece and then each of these boxes were about $25 in lumber. So anybody can do it really inexpensive and I think it's going to look so beautiful and be just a breathtaking entryway going into the chicken yard this coming season. So once we got these boxes built together we just lined the bottom with some river rock and they are ready to go just waiting on some soil. In this first box right here, I plan on planting a few plants of Malabar spinach, and I may also do as a complementary plant some trailing nasturtium, if, that is if the Malabar spinach doesn't choke it out. And the Malabar spinach, it's a really fast growing green that has a multitude of health benefits, and it's just gonna grow up and climb on the trellis. It has edible leaves, um, and the berries are also edible as well, which is gonna be really neat. On the other side, in this box, I plan on planting the Tigger Melon, which is a type of melon that only grows to be about the size of a baseball or a softball, but it's supposedly a really prolific plant. So I'm really excited to try it. It's gonna climb up on this side of the cattle panel and they'll meet in the middle. And I'm also gonna intersperse a few trailing nasturtiums as well. In this bed where the carrots are now, I do plan on solely planting pollinators such as more dwarf nasturtiums and some herbs like borage or hyssop. And then I moved the pot that contains my broccoli and my red romaine to over here. So once that broccoli and the red romaine come out and that purple kohlrabi that's in there, we are going to replace those plants with more beneficial plants that are going to attract pollinators, more flowers definitely. Up here by the house, last year I planted pole beans and my pole beans did not perform well. In this spot, in the spring and in the summer, it gets a ton of midday and afternoon sun and it doesn't get any morning sun. So it was just a little bit too hot for those pole beans. Anytime the temperature would get above 100 degrees, the flowers would fall off and we wouldn't get very much bean production off these plants. So instead, I'm gonna move the pole beans to another area in our garden. And along this wall, I plan on planting my winter squash. Specifically, I'm really excited to plant the Seminole pumpkin, which is known to do really well in hot weather. I think I'm gonna bring back my Jarradale pumpkin in this corner where it's gonna be shaded by the crepe myrtle tree 
and I'm also going to have about two more varieties. So a total of probably four winter squash varieties in this bed. I plan on leaving my yarrow and I'm hoping the yarrow is going to flower this year. This is going to be the second year that I have these three yarrow plants and they didn't flower at all last year. So I'm thinking about adding fertilizer to their soil that is going to hopefully help support the plants in flowering this year. But, but so far I really like yarrow. It has a lot of great medicinal qualities to it and it's really hardy and beautiful. I have not protected these plants whatsoever this winter. They've been snowed on with a foot of snow. They dealt with the hot weather all summer and they just have no complaints and they're still doing pretty good, pretty healthy for dealing with everything they've had to deal with. So I'm gonna leave those in there. I may plant some more plants behind them that grow up trellises. So give me ideas if you have anything small that I could plant probably along the wall that likes to grow on a trellis. Let's go back into the back garden and see what we have planned back there. Hey girls. Hey Odette, how are you? So we're gonna go back and check that area out. Hi girls gotta watch my stuff. They always walk right under my feet, thinking that I'm gonna give them treats. We're to the back garden bed. <laughs> now it is winter. It looks like a garden in the winter. I'm gonna start this back garden tour from one end and just kind of work my way around the outside and then we'll get to the garden beds. So in this first little bed right here in ground bed, I plan on planting dragon's egg cucumber up this trellis. In the back corner over here, I am going to finish back off this back area with some hardware cloth so the chickens can't get their heads through the wire and eat my plants. And I actually plan on putting milkweed or butterfly weed into this back corner. I want it kind of tucked away out of the way where I'm not really going to be messing with it because um, it is a poisonous plant and just touching the outside of the plant, just like handling the plant can actually cause dermatitis, um, skin irritations. So I kind of want it out of the way, but I did want to include milkweed this year because it is just so valuable to monarch butterflies and I really want to support them. They migrate through here so much. In fact, the time of year when monarch butterflies do migrate through this area, they basically just fill the skies. There's so many of them that come right through this part of the country, right through this part of the state even. So I really want to set them up for their best success, give them something good to eat, and hopefully while they're here they can pollinate some of my flowers as well. I do plan on removing all of these pots along this wall and I'm going to till the soil along this wall and I'm going to add a cattle panel trellis against this wall so that I can grow some plants that climb up the wall. Look at that, the snow's really starting to come down. In this first area, I'm thinking I'm gonna do more cucumbers, probably some pickling cucumbers. In the middle, I really want to plant Kajari melon. And then on the end, I'm thinking about doing the moon and stars watermelon. All between these plants on the ground, I do want to also plant beneficial pollinators, potentially maybe some zinnias or maybe a climbing black-eyed Susan that can climb up this trellis, something like that. Behind this trellis on the garden bed, and tucked away in the corner, I plan on planting the Charente melon. This melon is a French melon, and France, France is typically a lot cooler than the Chihuahuan Desert in Western Texas. But I really do hear a lot of good things about the Charente melon, and I thought we'd give it a go growing it in our garden. So with it being tucked back in the corner back here, I think it's gonna get a lot more shade because it's gonna be planted behind the tomatoes. And the tomatoes last year grew about eight feet tall and provided a lot of shade on the cucamelons. So I'm hoping they'll grow just as well this year and provide a lot of shade for the Charente melon. And I have high hopes for the Charente melon. It's a beautiful, fragrant melon. Y'all guys remember what I planted in this pot? It was a couple videos back now, but I planted poppy seeds. We have three varieties of poppies in this bed. I have a scarlet peony poppy, a white sissinghurst, and a tangerine gem poppy. Now, the other day I did go ahead and also broadcast a little bit of bachelor's buttons in here to hopefully grow up between the poppies as well. I forgot to mention, I added a upside down tomato cage and some netting to cover, hopefully, 
this is going to provide a little bit of protection when those poppies germinate because sparrows love little tiny seedlings last season along this back wall over here i had planted some winter squash in the bottom we had a jar of pumpkin i had a couple acorn squash and some butternut squash this year i plan on planting my pole beans along this area they get a lot more shade on this side of the yard than up there against the house and this microclimate even though we get a lot of sun is a lot cooler than the other side of the yard where the house is so I'm hoping the pole beans will do better in this area. Now last year I did plant purple potted pole beans and purple potted pole beans like cooler weather. This year I'm gonna change those out and I'm gonna plant rattlesnake pole beans. And rattlesnake pole beans are from the south and they should handle the heat a little bit better. So I'm hoping that changing the location we grow the beans in and upping to a more heat tolerant variety, hopefully those two things are gonna help us get better production on pole beans this year. I don't have any plans yet for this pot right here. So let me know in the comments below, what do you think would go good in that spot in that pot right there? Now this back raised garden bed, this is a three feet by eight feet long raised garden bed. This was my favorite growing location last year. Last year I had blue beauty tomatoes the whole length of the trellis, as well as some eggplants, some peppers and some nasturtiums. This year, I do plan on keeping my peppers in the same spot. It's really the only place I have room for such nice, big, tall, luscious, indeterminate tomatoes in our yard. And if I were to try to rotate them, I don't think they'd get enough sunlight to really thrive. So even though people recommend rotating your crops, this year, I'm going to keep the tomatoes here. I'm just going to try to amend the soil, add more... Um, organic matter to the soil and see if we can have another successful year growing tomatoes here. We didn't have any pests on the tomatoes last year, so I'm not too worried about planting in the same spot, bringing the same pests back because we didn't have anything bothering the tomatoes last year. This year, I do plan on planting a large variety. I have enough room in this raised garden bed to probably plant seven tomato plants and I have eight to 10 varieties of tomatoes that I want to plant. So it's gonna be a challenge for me to try to narrow down which ones I want to really focus on this year. I actually added a few more tomato varieties to my seed collection and don't worry, I have a little bit of self-control. I didn't buy these seeds. <laughs> One of my old professors from back when I was in college actually came into my work the other day and he knows that I have a huge passion for gardening and he actually brought me four new seed packets of new varieties of tomatoes that I don't own yet. So you'll have to stay tuned. I'll show you in an upcoming video which seed packets he brought me, but they were all harvested out of his garden. One of the varieties is a variety I've never heard of before and it originated here in the Chihuahuan Desert. So that's really exciting. So I'm so thankful that he gave me those seeds, but I had already kind of planned my garden out. So now I'm going to have to shuffle around. I do want to include some of the seeds that he gave me into this spot. Now I'm sure you're looking at this and thinking, ew, like what is all of this going on? So last year when I pulled out my plants, I just laid them down in this garden bed and I'm letting them break down and add nutrients back into the soil. Whatever doesn't break down by the time I'm ready to plant, all of this top layer is just going to come out and go into the compost area. And I am going to still add more organic matter to the soil before I plant. I'm already planning my order for soil this year. I like to make my soil from scratch. So I had to do a lot of research to try to get the best deal, doing a little bit of online shopping, a little bit of local shopping, just trying to make sure that I can get all of the things I need for the best um, deal while still getting good quality um, organic materials. So. I'm gonna definitely do a video of when I am in these soil beds and we'll give you a little bit more details then. Some of the tomatoes I definitely am going to include this year are gonna be Dr. Witchies. Uh, I want to and try the White Beauty. I wanna try the Barred Boar, but I also have a lot of other varieties. Um, I really wanna try the Get Stuffed Tomato and definitely a few of those varieties that my professor gave me. So it's gonna be hard to try to figure out what's gonna go in here. In front of the tomatoes, I am planning on doing summer squash. 
I think I have room for three plants. I definitely want to include Ronde Denise. I want to include the Patterson Panache Jaune et Vert Scallop Squash, as well as the Gray Zucchini. And then I know that summer squash are really big plants. So what I plan on doing is underneath and around those plants, I'm gonna plant some complementary plants like marigolds, some herbs such as maybe some basil and different things like that. I have a lot of different complementary plants that I want to include in this gardening space and we'll see where we can squeeze them in. After we get through the summer squash and the far corner of the bed, I'm going to plant my little fingers eggplant. And this garden bed, it's also a three by eight. I'm gonna definitely get rid of this uh, little greenhouse cover. I may keep this cover on initially, just while my plants are establishing, while they're still small, just to can maybe kind of protect them from any late frosts that we get into our spring season. But in this corner right here, probably taking up about a third of this growing space are going to be pepper plants. I have nine different varieties of peppers that I want to plant in this spot, including Cubanel pepper. I want to use the Buena Mulata. It's like a purple spicy pepper. I also want to include a pepperoncini, which is a pickling pepper, and then a lilac bell pepper. And those, that's just to name a few. We're going to have a lot of varieties in this spot. Now on the other half of this garden bed, I plan on planting cardoon in the corner over here. Cardoon is a wild cousin to the artichoke. I also want to plant okra in the back, and I know okra can get really large and really bushy, so a lot of you are probably thinking this spot is way too small for okra. Now I did grow okra last year and I gave them a lot more space than they probably needed because the okra I grew last year were very, very small. They still produced, but they just weren't as big and bushy as I had been expecting. So what I'm going to do this year is I'm not gonna give them a whole lot of space. I'm probably gonna plant three plants in an area over here. And if they get too big, we'll adjust when the time comes. And if they don't get too big, then that's kind of what I was expecting. In front of the ochre plants in about a two foot by four foot section of this garden bed, I'm gonna devote solely to greens. I plan on planting some heading collards, some arugula, some chajimase, as well as some kale. Now, in all of these varieties of greens, I am selecting varieties within these species that are more suited towards hot environments, towards varieties that can handle heat, because we get some really hot weather out here in western Texas, but I do want to incorporate more greens into our diet this coming season. I did forget to mention one more idea that I have for this gardening space that I didn't really utilize last year to its full potential. This area right here. Now last year I did have winter squash here and winter squash do take up a lot more space than beans do. So because I'm gonna put pull beans along this wall, I'm left with a good 18 inch growing space that's not being utilized. This year I do plan on putting a ton of beneficial plants that are going to attract pollinators. So that's gonna bring in a lot more pollination this year hopefully than what we had last year. I have a lot of ideas for what I'm going to plant here including dwarf nasturtium, cosmos, um, a lot of different varieties of flowers like zinnias, things like that. And I also have a seed packet that is just says beneficial bugs on it. And it has different wildflower varieties of plants just already in a pre-packaged seed bag that you can broadcast and it brings up plants that are designed to provide a great ecosystem to support beneficial bugs. So that's the gist of it. That is the majority of the idea that I've come up with for what I'm gonna plant in this growing space right here. I'm really, really excited for the spring 2021 garden. I'm sure a lot of you guys are too, already sitting at home planning your gardens. If you haven't started planning your garden yet, now's the perfect time to do it while you're still able to spend some more time indoors, spend a little bit less time working outside. You can really devote your time to learning more about these varieties and trying to come up with a plan on where to put them. I am sure many of you guys are just like me and you are so impatient and just ready to start those seeds already. We do have a little bit longer to go. We're still in the winter. Don't start your seeds yet. Just hold out just a little bit longer. For some of us, it's only about a month to go until it's time to start our seeds. We're almost there. <laughs>
I'm really trying to take the time to enjoy my winter garden at its fullest right now and maximize the potential with that growing space. And I'm still trying to be mindful of enjoying this season of rest that we're having right now because I know that once that growing season kicks off and spring is here, it's gonna be like, hit the road running. We're gonna be full force, a lot to do, a lot of soil to create, a lot of plants to tend to and a lot of planting to do. Now some of y'all saw that I got a green stock for Christmas, so what am I gonna plant in that? At the moment, I tentatively plan on putting my green stock right here where this winter container garden is. Now, this is on a concrete pad, so it may get too hot for my green stock going into summer where the days are really long and really hot and really sunny. So if that's the case, I'll probably end up moving my green stock more over here where the greenhouse is, but we'll see. I'm gonna kind of play it by ear. The green stock is gonna start over here by the back door and we'll kind of go from there. Now, what's gonna happen with all of these pots? Well, my artichokes, which are the two biggest pots in the back, those are going to keep artichokes in them because artichokes are perennials. They can grow up to four feet wide, four feet tall plants. So I'm probably just gonna move those pots farther out into the yard. The other pots that are in here are gonna be repurposed for other plants once the winter garden season is over. I have four yellow five gallon buckets. Those are going to be where I'm kind of planning on putting a couple varieties of tomatoes. I'm thinking my Amish paste tomatoes are going to go into those five gallon buckets, but I'm not set on that yet. How do Amish paste tomatoes grow in five gallon buckets? I'm a little curious if that's going to work for them. So I have a total of 14 pots under this cover that I am going to be growing things in in the spring. Now six of those are already called for, the four that are going to be tomatoes, the two that have artichokes, but that leaves eight pots that I have room to grow other things in. So let me know, give me a heads up, give me a shout out, leave it in the comments below. What do you think I should plant in the remaining eight pots that I'm using for my winter garden right here? That leaves me room for a green stalk right here. If y'all haven't seen in my previous video what a green stalk is, it is a garden tower planter, which is about probably three feet wide and at least maybe five feet tall. It maximizes your growing potential in a small space. So with my five tier green stalk planter, that gives me 30 flower pots in that one tower to grow things in. So I can plant a lot of plants in that growing space. With my green stalk that's going to be right here, it has five tiers. The bottom three tiers are the original green stalk garden planting tiers where you can plant standard sized fruits and vegetables in each pot. The top two tiers are the leaf tier. It's a very new addition to green stalk, just came out this year and they're shallower pods where you would plant smaller plants in. So the top two tiers of my green stock, I'm going to devote solely to herbs. The bottom three tiers of my planters, I'm going to plant bush beans. I'm going to plant more pepper plants, if you can believe it. And then I'm also going to plant a couple varieties of cherry tomatoes. So I'm really excited for the potential that the green stock garden planter holds. I have been looking at it every day and wishing that it was time for me to plant in that green stock. I am ready to start something in there. So that's really exciting. All right, so that's it. That's the gist of my spring 21 garden. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to leave in the comments below if you have any ideas or suggestions for where I should plant something in my growing space. I will go take a look and let you guys know what I think. I did take the time earlier this week on a day that was really beautiful to go ahead and record an update to show you guys. I knew that this weather was coming. I knew that I wasn't going to be going to be able to record it today. So I went ahead and about two days ago went ahead and already recorded a nice little update to show you guys. I'm going to very quickly give you guys a little winter garden update. So my artichokes in the back are actually doing really good, which actually, man, it really surprised me just because these plants like to be touched with a little bit of cool winter weather, but they don't like to sit in cold weather like we've been doing the past week. Uh, you really don't want to put artichokes in any temperature lower than 25 degrees ever. And even then, they really don't like temperatures much colder than 45 generally. So these guys have been troopers. I thought we were going to lose them, but 
my artichokes are hanging in there they're really growing a lot this week having that warmer weather after those really cold snowy nights we had last week my pansies are hanging in there a little droopy in some areas but at this point I have three that are flowering which is really neat I almost lost this kale last week it was completely limp and droopy and over the past couple days it's gotten a little bit more rigid which makes me happy and that kale is uh, about a year old now my butter crunch lettuce has been doing so well I have noticed on the bottom side of the leaves though that I am having a few aphids I can see one right there. I didn't know aphids were really out in the winter time. Just kind of smush it off the leaf. But for whatever reason, they are taking refuge and solace, hiding under the leaves of my butter crunch lettuce, waiting for winter to be over so they can strike again in the garden. So I've been watching that and if it gets bad, I'm gonna have to spray neem oil on the bottom of these leaves. But I did think that was interesting that my butter crunch lettuce is the only plant in the garden right now that has aphids. And there's a few. They don't seem to be damaging the butter crunch, but I have noticed them sitting on the bottoms of the leaves. My um, Swiss chard, the one in the back, my yellow Swiss chard is doing pretty good. This one in the front looks terrible. It's terrible. I'm probably going to pull it out, the red one. My kale over here is doing great. It's growing really big. Out of my four cauliflower plants, they were all really wilted and droopy. Earlier in the week, three of them have perked right back up with very minimal frost damage. The fourth one, which was the largest, sustained a lot of frost damage. And I'm not sure yet if he's gonna make it, but I'm gonna give him a shot. It's too late to start anything else probably in this pot and <laughs> So we're just gonna see how far we can take him. My shallots are really good, sage is good. We're getting lots of flowers on our pansies back there. Now something interesting that I've been dealing with this week, a struggle I didn't think I was gonna deal with is I've been fertilizing these monthly with blood meal and bone meal, a really natural fertilizer. And the crazy thing is the blood meal is basically what it is. I mean, it's, it smells just like dried blood, which means that it has piqued the interest of our dogs. You can see all the bare spots where they've nosed through trying to get at our blood meal. And in doing so, have actually, they actually pulled up my shallots. My shallots were lying on the floor a couple days ago and I had to replant them and they've kind of perked right back up. So that was a struggle this week I wasn't anticipating, but overall my garden survived a really bad foot of snowstorm that I wasn't prepared for or expecting. And overall, everything is still thriving and growing, which makes me really happy. I am gonna keep an eye out for that cauliflower. I thought it was completely dead a few days ago and those new leaves are bigger and growing. So there's still hope. Don't give up on your plants too early. You never know if you just give them a chance. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and I'll see you guys soon. Dyson, what did you think of my garden tour? What did you think? He says, go subscribe to her channel. See more videos. Just